Well, we, we released our inter interim assessment um, a week ago, and the level of uncertainty is, is so big that uh, we, we had two projections. The first one um, calculated an impact on growth uh, internationally at 0 0.5. But the assumption was that this uh, uh, shock of the coronavirus was going to stay mainly in China, was going to be contained in China, which is not the case now. We know that the focus had moved uh, particularly to Europe and many other economies. Therefore, we might be in the verge of uh, what our calculations have shown that uh, could take a higher toll on growth that could be around 1.5. So we still are in the world of our certainty because we know that this is a supply and a demand shock to the world economy, a supply side because we know that China, who is the uh, origin of the, of the shock, uh, is very well connected to all the economies through supply chains that are being disrupted. Uh, China, for example, is 25% of components for computer and electronic products. But there is also a, a demand shock because there is immediately a, short, a, a, short, uh, a, a shortage, for example, of tourism services, of travel bans, or the restrictions that are being taken to contain the spread of the virus. And I think this is going to have a higher uh, impact on the world economy. On the other hand, we've heard the G20 last uh, week uh, sending a very strong message on how much uh, these uh, economies are going to be taking measures on the fiscal and monetary side and other support services that probably will uh, help contain the higher impact. Ella, let me ask you about some of the stimulus measures because out on the back of some of the central bank moves that haven't had much impact in stabilising some of the concerns out there, at least on markets at this point, is the next step really going to be governments loosening the purse strings to try and shore up economies across Europe that, let's face it, have been only barely growing in 2019 anyway? Well, but the point is that they need to continue doing it. And I think the fact that the 20 more important economies in the world are saying that they are going to have coordinated action for fiscal and monetary stimulus, I think is an important measure. Of course, this is countered by the fact that the spread of the virus continues to be felt across the world. And therefore, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty. There is a lot of loss of confidence. Uh, and, and, and the markets are reacting in the way that we are seeing uh, today. But the fact is that this is an important message that needs to be uh, told. I think that there are some other measures that have to do with the support that the health sector is receiving in many of these countries. Uh, we are, for example, uh, recommending at the OECD that uh, some fiscal um, uh, relief is given to the health workers, uh, support to families. Uh, uh, we know that there are many people that are uh, uninsured from the health services, so we need to, to support and, and, and induce a, an additional element there uh, to uh, help the system to cope. So, um, yes, it's uncertain, but, at the, but countries are taking the measures that need to be taken, and, and therefore uh, we will need to just uh, track how markets uh, start to uh, report as this uh, moves forward. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersecchi and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.